Hey Canucks fans, let's look at some of the math behind these 20 and 2014 playoff proposals for the NHL. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Tuesday, May the 19th. You may recognize the background. I'm back at my office exactly two months to the day that I started working from home. I'm now back at our Catholic Archdiocese, the Pastoral Center, our headquarters, and yeah, it was a little tough to, uh, you know, I still got up early when I was working at home, but a little tough to break the routine, say bye to Gil and Sean and Jake and Kayla and make my way to the office. But I get why we have to do it. We want to try and return to normal as safely, and uh, but as quickly as possible. And of our four-phase approach, I am part of phase one as one of the directors, one of the management here. So um, you'll start to see now vlogs from my more familiar surroundings of in my car, on my way to the office, or from my office uh, from the office itself. So I want to talk, uh, give you two sh quick shout outs before I get into today's topic. Number one, Nick Bondi runs an awesome podcast called The Power of the Towel, but I, he's now changed it during COVID times to The Power of the Purell. And it's for Nux Misconduct, the great fan website. And we, um, yeah, we had a great chat yesterday and he posted the, the entire podcast this morning. He had fun on, on Twitter with me yesterday because I guess about half a dozen times I said, great question, Nick. Good question, Nick. That's a great question, Nick. Good job, Nick. Great question. And he says that I've been pumping his tires and he, that he didn't mind it. And I, I don't mind it either. You know, it was nice to be on the other side, actually, of the, of the call. I've been doing a lot of the interviewing, especially over Zoom. So it was nice to be on the other side and be the interviewee as opposed to the interviewer. And I, I thought Nick did a really, really good job. So I'll, I'll link to that down below. And I've also retweeted already, so make sure you check out that podcast if you can. The Power of the Purell for Nux Misconduct by Nick Bondi. Later today, I'll be with Vancouver Sports Fan. Um, I think uh, his Twitter handle is at Vancouver Fan or at F Fan Vancouver. I'll make sure I get it right. And he's a, a wonderful guy named Dave. He lives in Montreal, but he does a lot of Canucks vlogs. He's got a smaller channel that's, that's starting to grow a little bit, so I want to support him. And I'll be uh, appearing with him today. So I'll link to his, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'll be talking about tomorrow on my vlog, but I'll link to his channel down below as well. That's again Dave, Vancouver sports fan on YouTube. And uh, we're going to be doing a, a collab tonight. So I'm looking forward to supporting him and, be, and working with him on as we grade the, the top six forward, the top four demon, and the two goaltenders for the Vancouver Canucks this season. Okay, want to do a couple quick COVID updates uh, and talk about the NHL. We heard this morning actually that uh, the um, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has extended the border agreement, i.e. no non-essential travel between Canada and the US for another month. Obviously an agreement with the United States. So now we're looking at June the 21st, the day before my birthday, but it has nothing to do with it. Not like I'm gonna go to the States as soon as they lift the ban or whatever. But uh, obviously this could affect the NHL. They're phase two of players returning to their home cities to prepare for whatever the, the rest of the season is going to look like. Now, they, the NHL has been quick to say they hope that this doesn't, they don't expect this to affect their plans for their phase two. But obviously, the first thing that we think of when we hear borders are going to be shut down for yet another month, that extension of a month, you wonder how our players can return to their home cities, especially if they're in other countries uh, that their home city isn't in, i.e. a Swedish player trying to get to uh, trying to get to uh, Canada, or, or more importantly, I guess because of the border agreements between Canada and the states, uh, any many of the players, i.e., for the Vancouver Canucks that live in the states that need to get up to Canada, uh, and it's similar, uh, vice versa, any Canadian players, uh, players born, uh, living in Canada that need to get to their American-based teams. I don't know why I gave that Sweden example. That's nothing with Canada, the U.S., but you know what I mean. So that will be an interesting thing to keep an eye on as the NHL looks to uh, move into their phase two. But like I said, they're they're confident that this shouldn't affect it. Maybe they're going to get you know um, exemptions or a special status, whatever it may be. Or maybe they're going to argue that the NHL is essential. I don't know, but I'm sure they'll figure out how to make that work. Speaking of making that work, uh, we want to spend a, a few minutes talking about this 20 team, 24 team. Not talking about necessarily the teams that are going to make it or wouldn't make it. You can get that anywhere. But I want to look at the quickly look at the math behind it and. For those of you that uh, follow the NHL or follow any type of tournament, this is going to be very, very simple and very basic and very, um, I'd say, common sense for you. But there are a lot of fans out there that um, maybe only follow the NHL or they don't know the math behind the, the 16, the 20, and the 24. So without insulting anyone's intelligence, I think this is really important to go over because, um, yeah, because it's going to dictate, it's going to explain why the NHL is thinking what they're thinking. So we know that traditionally it's a 16 team playoff, 
right, eight teams on each side, Western Conference, Eastern Conference, and you can break that down further into two divisions, three teams from each division, and then two wild cards to make the eight. Of course, if there's five teams from one division, that fifth place team plays in over the other side, um, you know, um, uh, in the division, uh, basically is deemed to, to switch divisions for the playoffs. But all to say, it's always been 16 teams. Even when there's only 21 teams in the league, it was 16 teams. So you just, it only had to be not one of the five worst teams. It's kind of like the CFL where as long as you're not one of the two worst teams, you make the playoffs or the three worst teams. Same for the NHL when they only had 21 teams. 16 of the 21 teams would make it. Now we're up to 31 teams and it's still 16. So now it's better. It's exactly basically half the league. So you can't be you can't be in the bottom half and it makes it a lot tougher to get in the playoffs. So 16 is the magic number because obviously if you if you think it through 16 goes down to 8, goes down to 4, goes down to 2, goes down to 1. So four rounds, 16 to 8, 8 to 4, 4 to 2 and 2 to 1 theme of champion. That's why you have four rounds of playoffs. Under a 20 or 24 team scenario, you basically want to get down to those 16 teams because you can't start with 20 and, and cut them in half. You can't have 20 teams down to 10, down to five, and then it breaks down. You can't have two and a half teams. You can't give a, a team a bye in the, the second to last round. So that's why you got to get from 20 to 16 somehow. Or same for 24. 24 teams, then you have 12 winners, then six winners, then you have three winners, then you have to give a bye to a team before the final. That doesn't make sense at all either. So that's why in a 24 team scenario, you gotta to get to 16 teams as well. So if we all agree that four rounds come from 16 teams, 16, eight, four, two, one, then we gotta to get to those 16 teams so far uh, in, a, in a clean way. So that's where these play in, or that's where these basically, these buys come into effect. With a 20 team playoff, you would basically have, um, you, bas you gotta get down to 16, so that means in essence, uh, the first 12 would get in, and then the other eight teams would play for four spots. So 12 would get in, that means maybe maybe six on each conference. We'll, we won't get into how they're gonna determine it, but I just wanna go through the math. So 12 would get in, that means teams 13 through 20, eight teams would play down to four spots. So now you have the 12 that got a buy, and then the eight teams are going down to four, and there's your teams 13, 14, 15, and 16. And then you go from there, there's your 16 teams. So I hope that makes sense. For 20 teams, you can give 12 teams a buy, and then basically 13 through 20 play each other to come up with the final four spots. That is one way to do it. Um, you know, you try and do it, uh, if you try and give fewer buys, let's say you only give, instead of 12 teams, you only give, uh, you give eight teams a buy, and then that leaves 12 teams to play for six spots. That math doesn't add up, right? You have eight plus six, that only gives you 14 teams, right? If you have 12 playing down to six. So that's why that makes the most sense, is simply eight teams to play in for four spots. If you go with a 24 team playoff, which it sounds, sounds like what's gonna happen, then what you do there is you give only eight spots as buys, four on each side or whatever, but eight spots, and then that, that means teams nine through 24, right? You got those 16 teams, they play down to eight winners. So you have the eight buys, and then you have eight uh, winners to make your 16. So again, that's eight teams with a buy, and then the remaining 16 teams of the 24, they play down to eight. Eight plus eight makes 16. So no matter what, in the 20 game scenario, 20 team scenario, or in the 24 team scenario, you want to get down to um, 16 teams. So in, in a 20 team scenario, it's eight teams playing down to four to meet the other eight. Sorry, in a, sorry, in a 20 team scenario, it's, um, it's eight teams playing down to four to make the other 12, 12 plus four, 16. In a 24 team scenario, it's, um, it's 16 teams playing down to eight to meet the other eight. Eight plus eight makes 16. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, especially, that's the, I guess the challenge of doing these videos in one take is I don't have a chance to put graphics up and, and nice fancy you know, spreadsheets and whatever. I'm just gonna ask you to trust me on that math. The last thing I wanna say about math is we've been hearing about four hub cities Four host cities, Vancouver is one of the seven or eight finalists, which is pretty cool, along with teams like Toronto, cities like Toronto, Edmonton, Vegas, Minnesota, so on and so forth. But now we're hearing instead of four hubs with six teams each, for instance, if you go 24 teams, now they might only go two hub cities with 12 teams each. So another little math uh, riddle there, not even a riddle, but something to consider is if they go with only two cities, then you have 12 teams there in a 24 team play down. And then if they go with four cities, then you have six teams. So obviously by, by cutting the number of cities in half, you're doubling the number of teams that will be there. So that's also an interesting thing to keep an eye on. So there we go, Canucks fans. Just want to lay that out for you. Question of the day is, do you prefer a 20 
or a 24 team play, play down, play in, whatever it may be. We can talk about buys, we can talk about matchups later once they decide what they're gonna do. But I just wanna lay out some of the thinking. Do you prefer a 20 team play in or a 24 team play in? And then all the math that goes from there. Leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Check out the, the podcast, Power of the Purell. I'll link that below. And then check out my video whenever um, you know Vancouver Sports Fan gets us out uh, later in the week, that, the one that we're clapping on this week. Uh, tonight, I will I'll tweet that out when that comes out as well. So a couple things for you to consider. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and of each other. God bless and go Canucks go.